Hello everyone and welcome to another Lawrence Plays video. This week I'm doing something in the real world and I'm going to start try and build some shelves for this airing cupboard. Because as you can see, it's, we're not really using the space for a while and the shelves that are in there that came with the house are extremely rickety. So I thought, I can do better than this. So, well, let's unload it, get make some space and uh, see what we can do. Okay, now that's all that's out of the way. You see this clearly used to be an airing cupboard. We've got the um, pipes down there for the hot water to come in for the tank. I'm not sure what that is over there. I think it's probably part of the old um, hot air central heating this house used to have. The radiator at the back's a bit of a pain. I think I'm probably just going to leave that there but make sure it's just always turned off and build the shelves around it. And there's some sort of construction on the side wall here which I'm going to put, just pull off to be honest, to be honest. I think uh, shove something behind it give it a tug and that's not very well attached that's going to just come straight off. Should be fairly easy and I can start building the shelves up. Right let's have a quick go at this framing because this is going to get a little bit in the way. Right so this cable going down here that runs off to the shower it used to provide power to a, um, a power shower in the bathroom but it's now it's now disconnected at the top here, and these ends are are uh, are the ones that go off to, don't go off to the mains, so they're completely safe. So I can just pull this cable out, and um, I don't need to worry about that too much. And the rest of this framing up here, I think, should come out fairly easily as well. So let's have a quick yank on that and see what happens. I don't know what this was originally used for. Oops. Whatever it was, it's not very well attached. It's just been nailed to the wall, which is a pretty terrible way of fixing something. But never mind, it makes it easy enough to, easier to remove, so I shouldn't complain too much, should I? Boink. I'm just trying to pull it out without getting too much damage to the wall in the process. Maybe if I pull this off first. One. Oh, and there's the rest of it. Okay, so that's the cupboard basically emptied now. I'm going to cut that cable off at the bottom there, get rid of that completely. I'm not going to bother filling that hole in for now, I don't think. I'm not going to make the shelves particularly permanent, so I'll be able to take them out if I change my mind later. As I think I said earlier, the radiator is a bit of a pain, but I can probably work out. I'm going to have to cut some chunks out of this whatever shelf, whichever shelf goes in at about that height. But the rest of it is reasonably plain and open, so I think that's going to be okay. Next step is trying to work out how square this room is, and whether I'm going to need to faff around with trying to cut funny shapes out of things, or whether I can just go straight in there and fill with lots of nice, nice, nice and easy 90 degree bends. The quick and dirty test, namely just shoving a piece of paper in the corner and seeing if the edges line up with the, uh, the walls, suggests it actually is pretty good. So I think I'm probably going to be able to get away with just cutting 90 degree chunks out of the shelves and laying them in there. Now I took some approximate measurements before I went out and bought all the, uh, the bits and pieces for the job, so I'm not doing, being completely stupid here, but I'm now going to try and work things out a, bit more, a little bit more accurately and get an idea of the actual, slightly more precise idea of the size of the uh, the space so I can cut the shelves to fit. Because the way I'm going to fit them, the cuts need to be reasonably precise in order to ensure that the, um, the shelves rest nicely on the, on the supports. So this was about 90 centimetres across, the, uh, across the, the length of it. And this is the measurement that actually matters. I make that 90, 95, almost exactly. There's going to be a little bit of playroom in there, so that's okay. 95 centimetres and it's 70 deep and the boards I bought are 40 centimetres so that's going to work quite well um, but they're going to come out to about here and give me a decent amount of space to put things on on the shelves um, yes I think that should work quite well okay that's the supplies already let's start cutting things to size so I'm going to try and make about four shelves I think so we'll start off with the easy bits cutting the um, battens that go, will go underneath the underneath the shelves. I don't want the full length of this because the, there's going to be some overlap between them otherwise, so I'm going to make these 80 each. 
probably longer than absolutely required, but at least it means I'll have plenty of support for them. And because I don't think the walls are that great, it's going to be good to have a bit of extra support to make sure those, they're held as well as possible, essentially. What I really need here is a clamp of some sort to hold it steady. And also slightly more skill with the saw, that'd be good. A much sturdier workbench would be nice as well, but I'm just, I'm just you just have to work with what you've got, don't you? Three. Four. Now the short pieces where we're going to want them to be about probably 20 centimetres long each. I'm going to need eight of these. Am I going to have enough? Yes, I am, because that's 160. That's nearly, very nearly. So yes, I can cut this every 20 centimetres and I'll have just enough wood. This part is very approximate. These lengths don't matter at all. As long as, as long as they all fit together inside the cupboard, it doesn't matter whether these are 20 centimetres or 15 or probably even 30 would be okay. They're just there to provide some end support under the, uh, under the shelves. It'd be so much easier if I, had, if I was able to clamp it and had a secure workbench. Too bad. Now we have the hard part. This part's going to be much harder because I need to convert, do much longer cuts, and the actual precision matters a bit at this point. So along here, 25 centimeters is there. other side there. Now the whole board is more than twice as big as I need it to be for one shelf but not by an enormous amount. So I'm going to go from this end as well. So this way at least I know one of my cups is going to be one of my ends is going to be straight on each piece. Okay, now it is decision time. <laughs> I can either try and do it with the regular saw, just go through from here, trying to get a straight line with it. I don't know how good I'm going to be at that. The alternative that's going to be a lot more fun is to use this thing. But I don't know, again, I don't know how good I'm going to be at a straight line with this. So I'm going to take, try this one first, because it'll be fun if nothing else. And I'm going to go down the middle, halfway between the two lines I've just drawn on. That way, even if I do screw it up, and it's a terrible, terrible cut. It doesn't actually matter. Okay, the downside of this, I can't see where the blade is. I don't really want to cut towards myself, that seems like a bad idea. Okay, let's see how this goes. It's not been particularly brilliant for the um, surface of the uh, 
chipboard, but that line's reason. Mm, uh, it's not that straight actually, there's quite a noticeable curve on it there. Let's see if I, if I do this. Yeah, I can definitely see daylight through the gap. It's a relatively even cut though. The question is, if I had a line to follow, would it be any better? The answer is I'm not sure. So yeah, the problem I have with this is when you look at it from above, you can't see where the saw blade's actually going. Said I could probably make a mark on it to show the center and just try and keep that in the right place, lined up with the, with the line on the wood. It seems worth a shot because I think it's going to be more, well, certainly much easier than it is with the saw, with the manual saw. And I think I'm getting a neater cut as well. So let's risk it. Okay, it's not perfect, but that's pretty good. I'm pleased with that. It's definitely good enough to go within the tolerance of one of these things. So I'll definitely be able to rest it on these. How is it for length? Tiny bit under 95 centimeters. Not quite sure why. <laughs> More like 94.7, but that's going to be close enough. It's, this is a shelves in, a, in an airing cupboard, not something that um, is enormously important. I was also going to give us a quick sand down once I've finished. Try and remove any of the sort of the loose bits before the cat can spray can just generally look a bit tacky. So I've got some sandpaper. Yep, yeah, that's much better. To be it's nicer than the other end. Let's see what kind of One piece done, three more to go. <laughs> now that worked so well last time, I'm gonna try and do the same thing again on this piece. So I want to put it in about the same place because kneeling on it from the left seemed to work quite well. If only I had an actual jigsaw, eh? that'd be much easier. So, never mind. Now the sensible thing to do now would probably be to go and do a test fit of those two inside the cupboard upstairs. So let's go and have a look, see if they fit. Or see if one of them fits, they're basically the same. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good fit. Okay, and rinse and repeat. Part two. I swapped the batteries over in the cameras, so that'll get, make sure they stay working. And I've eaten a load of food as well, so I've charged up my own batteries, that should keep me working. The first thing I'm doing here is getting rid of these wire clips that were um, on cable clips that were on the side of the cupboard wall for the, for the mains cable that was running up in here, for the, for the old shower. Not because they're in the way so much, it's just I feel that I might as well tidy it up while I'm here. Since I'm not using this anymore and I've pulled the cable out. So yeah, I'm going to pull these out eventually. There are quite a few holes being left in the cupboard from, um, well, from me taking these out and from various other things that have come off the walls at various times. If I cared particularly about exactly how it looks, then I'd go around with some filler and patch them all up and stuff like that and then paint over it all. But to be honest, it's, a, um, it's an airing cupboard, it's hidden away. Nobody's going to see it. I don't really care at this point. With the way I'm going to put the shelves up, they're going to be reasonably easy to pull them back out again. It's something I could do later if I feel like, if I feel the, feel the need to. This one doesn't want to come out. I think I'll just leave that until I come back with some pliers. Okay, so the way I'm going to put these shelves together is have a piece of wood along the back of each one like that, screwed to the wall. Nice if this wood was a bit flatter. Maybe I'll put it that way around. Screw it to the wall. 
and then a shorter piece on each of these side walls like that to hold the um, to support the ends of the shelf and then another three up the um, up the side of the up, up the wall here so I've decided rather than trying to cut one to go around the edge of the radiator it'd be much easier just to put the first one at this level on top of it and then work up from there so the first one to go about about there uh, there we go, it seems to fit the wall reasonably well. I'll probably I'll lift up a tiny bit off so it's not actually resting on the top of the radiator, but that's basically where I want to have it. And of course I've got a um, spirit level to make sure I get this thing in flat, which it is there actually, the radiator is almost is perfectly flat, that's quite impressive. Let's put something, let's just put something underneath it then to make this nice and easy to get it in exactly the right place. Still flat, still flat, excellent. Now my plan here is to drill straight through the wood and into the wall and then bash uh, and to, to, to make my um, some marks to make sure I get it in the right place and then put the raw plugs in and then, and then screw into those. Unfortunately, the screws I've got aren't as long as I would like them to be, but I think, I think they should do. And I think I'll have one in the middle as well, just to give it that extra bit of strength. Okay, now I can lift this off. Rescue my spacers. And hopefully these roll plugs will fit nicely in these holes. Having picked the right size, yes, there we go. A bit of a push to get them in, but I think that's about right. Ow. Let's get this first one finished and then start thinking about a second and make sure I've got everything right before I start trying to get the second one in. So as I was saying, these screws aren't as long as I would ideally like them to be. So they, they are longer than the wood, but it means there's only about a centimetre and a half to go into the wall plug on the other side. So hopefully that'll be okay and it will hold the, sh the shelf up. I guess we'll see here at the time, once it's, once it's all up. Just make sure they're flat. That's the wrong, wrong drive a bit. Let's try the slightly bigger one, so it doesn't fall out all the time. Much nicer. Okay, that's going in well. I'm not going to tighten that up until I put the other screws in though. Two. Okay, that's nicely mounted. That's good and good and solid. Not quite perfectly flat, but it's it's pretty close. I don't think we're going to be having anything falling off the shelf because of its not quite flatness, um, <laughs> which I suppose is about the best I can ask for at this point. Step two, or step n plus one. I'm not sure exactly what step I'm on at this point. <laughs> is to put the um, these pieces on the side of the wall as well. So these are going to hold the shelf from the side so that it's not putting all of its weight on the back there. Now I need to use this to get that flat and to like flat like this as well. This is going to be tricky because it's sort of multi-dimensions and I've only got, actually I do have another spirit level downstairs but I'm not sure how whether I can use them both at the same time sensibly. But, no that works, okay, happy with that. Now I just have to screw this, uh, drill this without it moving. <laughs> Ah, 
and I failed miserably. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so that was there. So if I get, as long as I get this flat to there, with that point as it is, then I'll be all right. I think I felt that shift slightly, but not very much. Okay, repeat the previous step with another pair of roll plugs. Yeah, as I feared, it's a, it's it's not quite horizontal, but I think it's I think it's good enough. It'll it'll hold the shelf and it'll nothing. I won't lose anything from it. Now, the problem I'm face, running into here is how to hold the block steady enough while I'm attaching it. Um, I did consider gluing them to the wall, but then I need to pull them off in order to get the. Uh, the roll plugs in, so that isn't going to work. Maybe some tape, that might work quite well. Okay, number three. So I need to get it level with the back wall piece, like so, and horizontal as well, like so. Yep. Um, and to check that again. Oh, and um, <laughs> over there as well, of course. Now, can I tape this in place? So this is what we call a learning process. <laughs> As I put more of these up, hopefully I'm going to have a better idea of what I'm doing by the end of it than I did at the beginning. And so by the time I've finished, I might know what I'm, roughly what I'm doing and what I should have done at the start. Okay, let's do a trial fit now. I'm going, obviously I'm going to take this back out again in a moment, so that I've got room to work on the rest of them. But you could see how this fits. Okay, yeah, it could do with being. It'd be nice if it was just a little bit longer, to be honest. There's a bit of a gap. Yeah, there's a, so there's a bit of a gap at the ed ends of it, which is a shame. But other than that, it's okay. And I'll probably, before I finish, once I've got all the shelves in. I'll stick screws in through, downwards through the shelf, into the into the supports to make sure they're held a bit more um, a bit more securely. Yeah, and the wooden battens at either side of the cupboard are wide enough. Should be absolutely fine. Slight criticism: looking underneath here. If we're looking underneath, unfortunately, it seems the wood wasn't quite as straight as it might have been. So that bow in the, in the wood there means that a lot, of, basically all the weight is going to be taken by the middle bit. <laughs> Although if there is any sort of chance of failure there, it will push it down so that it rests on the outer ones, I suppose. It's not ideal. Maybe I can, maybe when I um, put the screws in, it'll pull it down a bit or pull it up a bit and it'll straighten that out slightly. I don't know. I guess we'll find out once, once I do that. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's not too bad. Not too shabby, as they say. Pull this back out because we don't need it in there yet. But I don't want it in there yet, it'll just get in the way. Now, how much space have we got? So I'm going to put in another another three shelves, and I want to space them evenly. I've got about 
145 centimeters to play with. We need to have four gaps in there, so we divide that by four. It's about 35 centimeters per per shelf. That's a little. Actually, no, that's not too bad. The fa they're going to be relatively close, but at least if they're fairly close, it cuts down on how much stuff I can put on them, and therefore reduces the amount of load, and therefore the risk of any sort of damage. So, let's mark those distances on the wall. Thirty-five, seventy, and one hundred and five. Thirty-five, seventy, one hundred and five. And finally, over here. Now these are only approximate because uh, the, the the length doesn't doesn't really matter exactly anyway. It's, um, it's okay to be a little bit vague about it. And I'm going to put in the first the back pieces first anyway, and then from there measure to get everything horizontal for those. Whilst I have measured on all, all, um, all three walls for all, all three shelves, it doesn't, have, it doesn't mean it has to be exactly there. And I'm going to use a smaller drill bit for these holes because I felt like it wasn't securing into the wood very well with the last ones. So I've dropped down, dropped down from a 5mm drill bit to a 4mm drill bit. My pilot holes, then for the roll plugs, I need to use the bigger drill bit to make the holes the right size. Right, let's test fit two shelves, see what this looks like now. Once again though, I've got a bit of a gap under the shelf there, which is odd given that I measured the whole thing quite carefully with the um, spirit level. Oh well, any sort of weight on here will push that down so it rests on there, so I think it will be supported, just not quite as well as it might have been. The last one's going to be a bit harder because it's higher up and, well, it's above head height. That makes everything harder.
right, let's put some shelves in. Let's put the top one in first, because it's difficult. Yeah, yeah, a, a tiny bit short, but that's better than a tiny bit long. Okay, so that's the four shelves in for a test fit. I'd say that's gone quite well. It's not a perfect fit by any means. The, um, the shelves themselves are possibly a little bit shorter than would have been ideal. So they, they do slide back and forth a little bit as we saw with the first one. However, that's better than the alternative of them being too long and, and just not fitting in at all. So yeah, I'm happy with that. The, the overlap distance is maybe half a centimetre at most, and the wood I've used for the supports is a good two, two and a half centimetres, probably an inch across, so it's probably two and a half centimetres. Then they're not, they're not gonna fall off. They could slide off forwards, that's a slight concern, like that. So what I'm going to do next is stick some screws down through the, through the shelves into the battens underneath to hold them in place. Now I had to go and find some that were the right length because it turns out I'm absolutely terrible at judging judging how long screws are and bought some that were much too short I don't know what I'm going to ever use those for but I do have conveniently I do have some that will will work quite nicely that's yeah just about long enough so let's get these shelves back the up the higher shelves back out again and I'll try and put them in one at a time as we go up these screws are much much smaller so I'm going to drill a very small pilot hole compared to the ones I've been using before for the others so yeah, smaller screws mean smaller drill bit. Now I want to go fairly close to the edge. To make sure I go into the wood. has countersunk less than I hoped. Okay, that's worked. Just need a bit more force. Now the second shelf. Okay, that's now all finished. But now we've got four shelves all mounted in the, in the cupboard and they're all mounted securely as well, so they're not going anywhere. There's not quite as much 
contact with with some of the underneath supports as I'd have ideally like. However, my feeling on that is that it's not the end of the world because as we load them up, if they flex at all, they're going to then meet the support and that's going to, then the supports are going to provide them with the with the support they need. That top one is probably the worst. The rest of them seem to be okay. They're not perfect, but generally they do seem to be resting on the supports. They seem to be reasonably flat. Okay, let's be brave. Let's put a spirit level on them. See how they do, see what it says. That's pretty good. So is that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm quite pleased with those. That's uh, not a bad job given that's my first, I think that's probably my first serious carpentry job I've ever done. I don't think that's too bad, uh, too bad at all. A bit more of an overview shot. I think that's come out quite well. And this of course was mostly a warm up for, um, for, the, for the next job, which is going to be to put similar shelves up in the tool cupboard. But because the tool cupboard is, is going to have significantly heavier things in it, I'm going to need to build much more sturdy shelves. So I think for this one, what I'm probably going to end up doing is having vertical supports between the shelves as well. So the shelves are actually, rather than all of the weight being taken by the walls, as it is as, as these ones are and the ones I've built upstairs are, I'm going to have vertical supports running between the shelves to, so that they all just support each other and, and then all the weight rests on the floor rather than on the walls. Because I'm not sure how much stuff I'm going to be putting in there. But quite a lot, a lot of the car stuff, things like jack, uh, axle stands and so on, are all quite heavy. It's all the fluids, the oil and the um, screen wash and that sort of thing, all pretty heavy. So I want to make sure that doesn't collapse under the weight of all that stuff. But that's a job for another time. For now, we've started loading these shelves up, as you can see. Um, and, but then they seem to be working well. Uh, I'd be interested to hear any suggestions anyone's got that I could, ways I can make them the, uh, the next lot better than these. Um, but until then, I hope you found this video interesting and entertaining. Until next time, I'll see you then.